Fala galera! Today's video, we got guest upload from Paolo! One of the best players in the world here gonna talk about the deck that he thinks is the best deck this format, and that is Tri Brigade Melfi. So if you guys are excited for this video, I want you guys to smash the subscribe button, go check out his channel down in the description below, and go check out tripgaming.com for the absolutely most beautiful playmats in the world. Anyways, let's get started, guys. Tri Brigade Melfi, right here, right now. Let's go. Fala galera, uh, my name is Paulo, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I have been invited by Triff to make my Tribegy Melfi profile here in his channel. Uh, the English version already did the Portuguese version in my channel. Uh, so I've been playing this deck for quite some time and I truly believe this is the best version of Tribegate even before the list, but after the list is definitely better than the the other versions in my opinion and i will try to explain a little bit why in this um for those who don't know i also stream on twitch uh where i play this deck a lot <laughs> so if you guys want to see some gameplay of this deck you can uh, look at the twitch uh, prj Yu -Gi -Oh. it's easy to find and yeah uh, there's also the, the the youtube channel so you can see the English content there as well uh, if you want to see more about the gameplay of this deck today I'm only going to do the the, the profile so in this deck you you notice a lot of different uh, ratios right if you if you consider a regular tribegate lists um, so I will start with the regular ones which is Novo, Fractal, Kitty and Keras I think that's the standard even for uh, regular tribegates then I will show the main card of this deck, the main reason why this deck is good. It's Obedient School. Uh, Obedient School, you can special summon free two or lower beast effect monsters for your deck with different names. Uh, you have quite some here. And their effects are negated and they destroy in the end phase. And after you use this card, you lock into beast. But lock into beast is not that a big of an issue since Beer Broom and uh, Frigid are both beasts. So that's really useful to make some combos while in Obedience School. Uh, Obedience School usually brings uh, the Kitty, which will trigger when you link that away, which is really important. You have the Puppy and the Kalantosa. Uh, the Puppy has the effect where uh, you can bounce it to hand and uh, destroy a monster because you bring Kalantosa off Puppy. So that's really interesting i can show the combo later in this video just for you guys to see how the business school combo is okay uh, uh, uh yeah i think that's good to know it's better it's better to show the next point so uh and calentosa when especially someone by a beast it can destroy a monster so the combo with your beating school is really good because uh first it is a starter and an extender because if you start the turn let's say you summon rescue cat and your opponent use anything on rescue cat uh, let's say he uses a Veiler or Rescue Cat. You can trip attack uh, as Rescue Cat. You can send to the graveyard as cost to the effect, even though it's going to be negated, just to open the field so you can use Obedience Cool after. So it works like Cop of the Grave, but also it's not exactly like a Cop of the Grave because if you draw only Cop of the Grave, you can play, but you, if you draw only Obedience Cool, you can. So it's a card that complements your turn or starts your turn, and that's really interesting because. In comparison for re with regular tribe gates this deck many times has three pushes you have uh, the normal summon push the keras push and the beaten school push so you have three pushes and it's difficult for your opponent to deal with all that pressure usually tribe gates has two pushes you have the normal summon and the keras push before you have barrage but now you don't even have that and barrage was a one-off uh, so that's a big thing that make this uh, uh, interesting option if you want to play this. Another thing that I uh, I like about the Obedient School itself is that it's really good, let's say you use Obedient School and your opponent doesn't use Ash or something, right? It's really good against the other cards, other hand traps that are being used in the format, for example, Valor in Perm. At minimum, if you have Obedient School and they do have a Valor in Perm, uh, you end on two interactions, which would be the Joyous that can pop two cards, one through Kalantosa and one from Puppy into Kalantosa. So that's the bare minimum that you have if 
you get him trapped with a villain perm and both cards are really uh, popular in the metagame. Uh, you can say the same about any other star of this deck, right? So usually the Veil or the Imperm, they trades fairly with something uh, and not here. So this card is pretty strong and that's the reason that I, that's why I created this deck. And, and I was hiding this deck for quite some time, like because I was going to play this in the LCS, but the LCS got uh, canceled. Uh, and then I started streaming, then I decided to, to show the deck because there was nothing to play and I truly believe this was a really good deck and it would be a shame if no one knew about it so I'm slowly uh, trying to convince people this is a really good option for my master plan of Melfi Warrior Domination so I'm already doing that on stream and I talked to a lot of people about this deck and some people I started to get convinced about this this and now I'm here on Drift Channel to get to more people to know and that this deck that I created is really interesting uh, as a Tribigate option. Um, so in this deck you play Prosperity, which complements really well with everything you're doing. First you can play Desires because there's some carpet that you can banish, but I think Prosperity is even better than Desires here because many times you go like this, you go summon Rescue Cat and something happens. And Rescue Cat is a really interesting card because people say that Rescue Cat is not good because it, it, it gets hit by everything. And, it's kind of true, like it gets hit by everything, Ash, Veiling, Perm, Gamma, whatever, right? It gets hit by everything, that's true. But in this deck, you have so many ways to punish the hit on the Rescue Cat that Rescue Cat, in my, in my eyes, it asks, asks, asks a question. Like you summon Rescue Cat and you say, you need to use something right now. Because if your opponent doesn't have a hand, hand trap against Rescue Cat, you absolutely instant win the game like 95% of the time, right? So if they do have something for Rescue Cat, in this deck specifically, you have many ways to punish. You have Obedient School, just like I mentioned before. You have uh, Karras, discard something. That's also another way to, to punish the Rescue Cat negation. And usually you hand with Karras or Fractal are hands that you can punish. And you have Pot into any of those cards. Or Obedience, or Fractal, or Karras, because Fractal is Karras, right? So it's really easy to punish at least one hand trap with this deck. And that's why I don't play uh, Cobble the Raven the main, and I also probably won't play Corsault on this deck because I think this deck is already really good into hand traps. Um, it plays really well into one, sometimes we even two hand traps. Um, and with that in mind, I don't think it's necessary for you to play cards like Call in the main, cards like Call or uh, Corsault. Uh, if you're that good, and to play the car those cards, you need to not play hand traps instead. And in my opinion, you need to play hand traps. Um, and that's the next big advantage of this deck in comparison to other decks. This plays a billion hand traps. And for for the ones who already know me, uh, I think for a long time this is the best way to approach things and I think still is. Um, it's not the best one, I would be glad if it, this wasn't the case, but I think it still is. So the hand traps, they depend, right? Like they depend on the meta game that you expect to play. So. I'm showing the version that I was going to play in the LCS um, with that lineup. That let's remember this was previous format, right? Uh, so, and this can change. But I think Ash, Veil, and Prime Gamma are really, really good still for the upcoming format. Um, oh, about Gamma. Gamma is specifically good in this deck because it can interact well with Rescue Cat and Obedient School. So that's a plus here. Uh, that you often use the effect me first uh, because those cards are really ashable, right? Uh, so that's really good for Gamma. The, the card that changes a lot is the Meister. It depends on the meta call. For example, for the LCS, I thought that Prankit would be somewhat popular and Dryton and shit like that. So uh, School Meister was decent, but it can be other tech here. I would rather play hand traps in this spot. Uh, and then the hand trap that you choose depends on what you expect. Uh, then I will now talk about what is not here, right? If you guys notice, there's no tanky here. And uh, I never played tanky in this deck, even when it was at 3. Because tanky in this deck is only more fractals. And then, yes, fractal is decent, but the, it depends how many fractals you think is good enough. And I think the consistency in this deck is, is good as it is. Like, you have fractal as it's like one card starter, right? You have Fractal, Rescue Cat to Bid in School, but you have Pots too, and you pot for six a lot. So the consistency of this deck is really high, and you also have combinations of Keras, 
uh, Carol's Nervo Carol's Kitty, right? So, or hands like Kitty Kitty or Kitty Nervo, what you can know some, and then in such characters, and characters discouraged you like that, right? So, uh, I think the consistency of this deck is good as it is. If you want to increase the, the, the consistency of this deck, yes, you can put one tanky instead of one of those cards and all that, but I think it's good as it is. And I don't think it's necessary because in this deck, tank is only more fractals, and I don't think that's too good because fractals is the worst one out of those, right? Obedience and rescue cats. Uh, and then you have the one of the questions that I get the most is why you play one revolt. And I will say this, and please, please, hear me out. Revolt is not that good to play multiples. Revolt. I see revolt as a engine requirement. You don't want to open Revolt going second, ever. It's really bad. So every time you have a card in your deck that you, if you open going second, you go, oh, this is not great. You have to double check if it's even necessary to play more than that. Uh, at first I was playing two, and then uh, I talked to some people and slowly arise one was more than enough. And since I started playing one, I never looked back. Like. And every time I draw a revolt right now, I got like a little bit pissed because it's so easy to find revolt in this deck because your play go through so often that open revolt is a liability, it's not good. So, and I see why the tribe gates do play revolt at first. It's most because uh, the deck going first wasn't that great. So it was stopped quite often. So to compensate that people play more revolts, Call by the Grave, Imperial Ward, like to compensate the amount of times they try to play they can't in the Tribe Gate Zoo previously. And now it's even worse. So that's why they play this go first card, like more revolts, Order and Call by the Grave. But that's definitely make a going second much worse because all those cards that I mentioned are worse going second and they're taking space of cards that could be hand traps. So every time I have a card in my deck, I ask myself, okay, this could be a hand trap instead. And the answer is usually, okay, I prefer a hand trap here. Can I play that? And I will try my best to do that because one of the advantages of this deck is the numbers. Uh, you have more numbers of interactions per turn with your opponent com in comparison to other decks in the metagame. And that, on the long run, it matters. It does matter. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Side deck, there's not much to say because this is really metagame dependent. But uh, what I will, will say is like there's this five card package here, which are going first cards that I usually side in all those five every time, and that makes your going first much better. This song strike can be uh, solid judgment, can be other things, can be cross out. Um, you decide uh, depending what you expect. This uh, had a lot of removal for back row because I was playing DB and DB had a lot of trap decks, so I decided to play that. But it can be only storms and fed, and this can be other hand trap like a cycle read or a draw or any beer or, i don't know there are many options that you can play here and bell is just a generic card that you can swap hand traps that are bad in some matchup for a bell let's say against shadow decks or prank kids uh Eldlish. so yeah there's not much to say about the the the, the side deck here uh because it's really meta game dependent and the extra deck uh there's one broom only one revolt there's no need for more free versions is necessary because you'll be in some combo use two so it's really important for you to have the third one available after you've been in school first turn. Also, sometimes against some hand trap hands from your opponent, you need to use all three Fergits uh, turn one. Just because of the locked into beast interaction, you have to link your monsters into another one and you all you can only link into Fergits. So that's a thing. And then this everything is standard, right? Until here. You have the joys, which is the star of this deck. Uh, this card is really good. There is the first effect that you barely use, but sometimes you do, but you can de where you can detach one one material and all Mephus can attack directly. This ne almost never happens. But the other effect is the the right the, the one that you use more, where you can it's a quick effect during your opponent's turn, where you can target one beast XYZ, which is 99% itself, and you send itself to the extra deck, and then you can special summon two level two or lower beasts from your grave up the numbers of the materials this monster had. It usually had two, so you can bring two monsters from your grave. Usually you bring Puppy and Kalantosa, and this is two pops, because one is Kalantosa right now, and then if your opponent summons a monster, you can use Puppy, get uh, to hand, and summon a second Kalantosa from your deck. Uh, 
the ability of the of Furge and Bruce shuffle cards away into the deck is really important in this deck because if you happen to draw the Pup in the Kalantoso, you can always put them back in the deck in the end of the combo so things are available if necessary and it also helps on the driver and the gamma so it makes me more I mean, it's a little bit safer to play cards that are not that great to draw of course i'm not going to push this too much uh but yeah um, one of the things that i did like my first version of this deck had two puppies and one kalantaza and this deck is skyrocketing win rate when i changed that to two kalantazas because i made the joyous melfi had two interactions instead of one so that's a huge change that i made when i was starting to create in this deck uh, so yeah and there's this guy which uh which is really good uh, the effect you can detach one material and can reborn one monster for your opponent. So you usually reborn like a gnashing attack for your opponent. So sometimes you can kill your opponent because of that. And then when a monster special summon to your opponent's field, you can target to any monster. It doesn't need to be the monster that you just reborn. Uh, and, and then you can bring something from your deck with the same type or attribute from a monster uh, that is an opponent's field. It could be hand, deck, or graveyard. So what happens sometimes is that you have two level twos and you have some level twos in this deck as you can see, right? And then you can make this into Reborn and Ash to bring a Fractal in from your deck. So sometimes you can extend your your combo with this. So it's a really useful, it's also a beast, so you can do this locked into beast with Obedience School. It doesn't happen too much. And the last card is Mouth of the Forest, like this card, to be honest, can be anything you wanna try. I'm still thinking what I can play instead because I barely do this. So this is a really flex spot that you have. It can be Zeus, it can be Mrs. Radiant, it can be Fogo. I try a lot of things. It can be uh, number 64 and can be um, Melf of the Forest. Melf of the Forest can search Puppy. That's the main thing about it. Uh, and that's it. I think this deck is pretty good. I, if you're playing Trivigate, I would advise you to try and most people who try prefer it. Um, and I want to show the word my creation because I'm really proud of this deck. <laughs> uh, so I want people to know how good this is because this took a while to, to figure out because there wasn't many source for me to find obedience cool combos in the internet. Like it's not something that most, that was really available. It's the one that exists were really bad or obedience school combos that play that plays like 11 melfi cards in the deck so it was pretty not not, not function in a competitive scene so i need to do that myself so I, I i open solo mode and i start in combo by myself like a billion times until i find a combo that i liked into that plays in, in, well into hand traps and play around things so that's why i'm really proud about this deck and i want people to know uh what i believe is really good so i will show really quick the the obedience school combo just so you guys know so i would just put uh let me get the obedience school here uh, and i will put only hand traps in my hand just to show what only obedience school can do okay uh so it would be this and let's get valor uh whoops valor ash and then no one uh, not in perm right let me get the ash Okay, so this is just obedience school, right? Uh, this is the most simple thing. So you use obedience school, and you bring three monsters. It's in this situation, if there is kitty, and puppy, and this is important to be puppy, and Kalantosa, right? Uh, so you bring those. And just remember, if you do open uh, one of the one, if you open the puppy one off, you can bring carries, which is also a bit, so the car is not that. Um, then you can make Fergit here, and you trigger kitty, and kitty, Sir Nervo and Nervo search kitty. Here, I don't know if you notice, I never normal summon. So I use Fergit here just in case I have another normal summon in hand. All my opponent doesn't realize that in the normal summon this, this happens. Okay, this happens a lot. I use Fergit, people negate and I normal summon kitty, nothing changes. Uh, so I use Fergit here and, and I'm all locked into beast, okay? Uh, to, to special summon this. Sometimes you have a Keras in hand or other tribe gate in hand, so it's good for you to use Fergit because if you get Nibiru or something like that, you'll still have normal summon. So here, I use the kitty, and I banish two. Uh, and I, you need to keep the puppy in the graveyard, because this is important, because it's the card that Joyous will be reborn on the opponent's turn. So here, you bring the broom, and now you need to make the, 
the joy is right now otherwise your broom will locked into tribe gates so you make the joys here and then in order to trigger those cards you need to link those two away to another version and then they will trigger right you you get the broom card uh and you shuffle something back let's put the perm here and then you draw a card and uh, you put the ash back and that's it this is a lot because i only use one card and this one card leads to this right the joyous and the revolt revolt we all know is really good it still is here uh but the joys is really interesting because let's say you, you pass your turn right your opponent summons like i don't know one monster and then you use joyous you send to the extra deck if my db helps and then you bring the puppy and the Kalantosa. I don't know if you notice I had a kitty so it's a play that also had a follow-up and this is to play around like let's say Bell because if they have Bell yes you can they can use Bell either on the Joyous because bring a monster in Graven or the Revolt but depending on they use the other one will be available and you have a kitty inside of any of those two right so I'm, I'm not going to play around Bell here uh, just to show the importance to have the kitty which will be a follow-up because then you do this and the Kalantosa triggers and the kitty triggers and if you really want you can even chain block the Kalantosa or the kitty which, which whichever you prefer and then you send this and you search another card let's get a kitty and then you kill one monster and then your opponent summons another monster and then you use puppy put your hand and again this is important because this makes carries this card easier for your next turn and then you bring the second column thoughts and then you kill another card right and then if your opponents keep trying to play you can revolt and then you have enough spaces because this version was hard made uh so you bring versions and another two doesn't matter let's say those two right and you have the arrow ready here and you also trigger the revolt the the version so you can even draw a card here and shuffle a card so for example you can shuffle the puppy that's another good shuffle that you do sometimes so that's uh usually how this goes and then you have the hard draw defenses and this deck has a lot of hard draw defenses as you guys can see uh i still had vela and perm i mean perm would be sad right but i have vela and perm and ash so it's almost impossible to lose when that happened and that's it and then if your opponent doesn't kill your board you can just start the turn and do joys again um joys again then this triggers Oh man, you pretty much won already. And then if somehow your opponent doesn't die, you can do joys on the opponent's turn and kill two cards. It's really, really strong when this works. Okay. Uh, so I think that's it. Uh, I hope you guys like it. And thank you, Drift, for the space for to show my, my creation, my deck that I'm really proud of. And I don't know if you pen this best deck, but if you pen this best deck, this is a close second. Okay. So that's it. Uh, if you guys like my content and like the way they explain things, I am always uh, on, on, on Twitch. Uh, in English, I am on Mondays and, and Wednesdays, okay? So if you guys ever want to see me there, you can take a look. And also my YouTube, cool. I'm also coach on the Elise Academy, I forgot to mention. <laughs> I'm also coach on the Elise Academy, so you want to talk directly with me. With coach sessions, you can, we can talk there, cool. That's it. Uh, see you guys later. And bye.